Hey guys. So I want to run through a quick self-criticism worksheet with you all. This is an exercise that I do with many of my clients and I actually did it with one of my clients this week. And so I thought, oh, this is the perfect time to do this with you all. This comes up a lot. We beat ourselves up. We become self-critical. We have low self-esteem. We have anxiety about certain things. And one thing that's tricky about certain types of trauma is that they are complex. And what I mean by complex trauma is we don't always know the direct source. It's not just one incident that came up at some point in time and we know exactly why we have insecurities around something. Complex means it happened in multiple small ways over our whole life. And so sometimes we don't understand where the trauma came from. So it's not like we can talk about the trauma so that we can process it and then hopefully have some of these uh, low self-esteem issues and symptoms dissipate. Uh, sometimes we have to kind of uh, dig a little bit to figure out what's going on there. So I want to try this exercise with any of you who struggle with low self-esteem or you find yourself constantly criticizing yourself or it holding back this low self-esteem, this holding you back from some of your goals and some of the things that you would do for yourself. So. What I want you to do is take a piece of paper, and I printed this out, but you do not have to print out something that's this nice. Can you guys see that? And you are gonna draw on this piece of paper, I just do sticky notes so that I can do it over and over again with different clients, but you can draw a big person. And you know, for some people, I just have them draw one big circle. And then inside that, you want the baby. The baby person. This is your child self that we're going to be working with. This is your baby. And the reason I do this is it's a little easier for us to hold compassion for a child, for a little baby. You hold a little baby in, their hand, in your hands and when it cries or it gets upset or it has needs, there's no, you're not supposed to be hungry right now or you're not supposed to be upset right now. There's just this assumption that their reasons are good enough right? Their reasons are good enough. They have their reasons and it's our job to take care of that. And so we want to talk about that child part of ourselves that has endured some trauma, didn't have his or her needs met at some point. And this is going to allow us to hold some space and be a little more self-compassionate, but I'm not expecting you to be able to do that right away. So that's why we're doing this activity together. So first let's talk about that adult self. Let's just go there. Let's just beat yourself up the way you usually would beat yourself up. You are too fat. You are too loud. You are too shy. You're too quiet. What types of so criticisms have you heard or do you beat yourself up about? You don't have the right thing to say. You should be further along in your career. You should be making more money. Let me think. What else comes up? You are lazy. Why can't you get going a little faster in the morning? Why aren't you motivated enough? You don't seem to be as motivated as other people. Why are you always so anxious? You're feeling really depressed. You're feeling really anxious all the time about certain things. Uh, you feel the need to keep secrets and hide a part of yourself and a part of who you are and what you think. What comes up for you guys when you beat yourselves up about things? What are you beating yourselves up about? What are you not good enough? So what do you guys come up with there? Now, after you've done that, if you haven't yet, pause the video. Don't listen to this. Don't listen to this part. All those areas where you really beat yourself up. Now, let's say those things. I wanna hide it a little bit. Hold on, I'm gonna, so I want you to fold your paper in thirds, like this. So now you only see this child. You only see this child version of yourself. Now I want you to tell that child all those things. You're not working hard enough. You shouldn't be upset right now. You shouldn't be eating right now. You shouldn't be hungry, right? You should be more productive. You should be making more money, right? 
<laughs> think about that. All these things that we're saying to this vulnerable child. Why aren't you good enough? Why aren't you good enough? Right? Sounds pretty silly, huh? And I, I hear where you're going to go with this because many of my clients do. I've been there, but I'm not a child anymore. I'm not a child anymore. I should be held to a higher standard, right? Well, of course. But what I want to talk about here is when we have had trauma in our lives, including complex trauma, which is just little incidents throughout our childhood, what happens is parts of our emotional growth, our coping skills, our ability to manage our situation and manage our problems, that's get, that gets stunted a little bit. And so the problem solver and the, the person in us that's able to manage and cope with feelings without feeling like it's a big deal. And I know you know what that feels like because I am sure there have been times that you've seen someone else cope with something poorly, another adult, and you think, oh my gosh, why is this such a big deal to you, right? You think, I could have handled that and I would have moved on with my life. And that shows that you're developed in that particular area. But there are parts of our childhood that without blaming anyone, we get held back a little bit. We get stunted in our growth. And what happens in those incidents is someone wasn't either able to teach us or guide us on how to cope with that, or it was so big and so overwhelming that no one at your developmental stage, maybe you were three or five or seven, or maybe all of those ages, should have, should have been able to handle that. They, it would have been too much for you at that age. As an adult, you can handle it, but as a child, you couldn't. And what happens is your neurology got built around that issue. And so now when you get triggered by that same issue, it's that neurology, it's that childlike neurology that's still trying to resolve the problem. And that child part of you doesn't have the tools. And so part of bringing all of these uh, childlike symptoms to the surface is what can happen is even as you're thinking about it and talking about it because it's exiting your body and then you're hearing yourself say these things again now your adult brain is hearing these problems and resolving these problems instead of your child brain you're developing new neurology around it so that's what our goal is to make it easy for you to develop new neurology around this issue so the goal is Let's first talk about when that adult was getting those criticisms, what was actually going on with the child? Can you guys see that? Is that blurry? There we go. When that adult was receiving the criticisms, what was actually going on with the child? So let's say the adult criticism is you are lazy. So this was some feedback that you received in your childhood or your childlike mind translated some feedback you got from the world around you that because you behaved a certain way, you must be lazy. Now what was really probably happening for that child? Maybe that child was overwhelmed. You're feeling overwhelmed. You needed guidance or some help you didn't know what to do. If you had, you would have. Um, you were really tired. Maybe your body was so exhausted from all of the other things that it's doing throughout the day that it wasn't physically ready to do that activity or engage that in that kind of appropriate behavior. So what other criticisms do you have? Like, uh, let's see, you're too fat. You're making a poor judgment on something. Now think about what was going on for the child version when they heard that. Again, this stuff got filtered in early and now as adults, we talk to ourselves this way. So, all right, you are too fat. Oh, what message did that child get? That your body, your body and your appearance has great importance, right? But what was your child needing when it, they were engaging in that behavior, when you were engaging in that eating behavior. Oh, were you needing comfort? Mm. Were you needing to get your way, to have a win? Were you needing something because you were 
lacking in something else? Yeah. What other criticisms come up? And let's talk about when the child was engaging in a behavior that would have received that criticism. Like if someone, some adult in your life told you that, what was that child, what was really going on for them? Let's dig deep. Were you really needing some guidance? Were you really needing some comfort? Were you really needing some attention? And that was the only way to get it? What were those needs as a child? What was really going on? And as you dissect what was going on with that child, like the child was really scared. The child was really lonely. The child was really mm, lost and confused. This is what the adults thought were going on and that's now what we criticize ourselves for, but this is what was really going on with the child. And then what are all those needs that come from that? What did you really need? Comfort, kindness, some understanding, permission to do something? What were the needs that came out of that? So if the criticism was you are lazy, but what was really going on with the child is they were confused and needed guidance and they didn't know what to do and they were overwhelmed. The need was I need an adult who can guide and support and encourage and inspire and help me. Okay, so now as an adult, when you catch yourself feeling lazy, now we know what's really going on. You're not lazy. You're feeling overwhelmed and you're needing some guidance and some help and some support from someone. So instead of beating ourselves up about this, how can we put our energy towards giving ourselves, giving our inner child this? Hope this is helpful, guys. <laughs> Have a good one.